Good morning and welcome to the Digital Pest Management webinar. My name is Paul Fisher and I'll be your host for today's session. I'm thrilled to have you all join us today from around the country and further afield. I'm excited to explore the topic of digital solution in today's pest control world with you. During the next 40 minutes, we'll be diving into how the role of digital and data can help you increase service quality by focusing on more risk mitigation activities such as identifying hygiene, housekeeping, and proof proofing um, over the traditional traditional bait box inspections that we we all know very well. And by exploring some of the latest ideas, trends, and strategies in in this area, Gary and our digital solutions manager, and Richard, our national account and technical manager, will share their insights and experience and answer your questions at the end of the talk. As you know, with ever increasing complexity around product registrations and compliance, comes the need to evolve and innovate how we approach pest control. Many of you will recognise us as Bayer. And as Enview now, we continue to build on over 50 years of providing professional pest industry with some of the most effective and trusted products and solutions in the market. With one of the most well-rounded product portfolios available today, uh, which include products such as Harmonix Rodent Paste and Digital Pest Management, uh, we believe in equipping press professionals with the best tools, enabling you to always be at your professional best at all times. Whether you're a seasoned pesty looking to stay on top of the latest developments or a newcomer to pest control community looking to learn more, there's something for everyone in today's webinar. Before we get started, I'd like to quickly go over some logistics uh, during the webinar. You'll have the opportunity to ask questions and partic participate in discussions using the Q&A facility in the, in the feature on Zoom. Please ask any questions you may have during the session and we'll come back to them to the end and, and give you the answers. We encourage you to engage with us throughout the session and share your thoughts and insights. We'll also be sharing some additional resources upon request at the end of the webinar. For those who wish to learn more, please type more info in the Q&A section to be included. So without further ado, let's get started and we will play a pre-recorded video, which will follow shortly. It's around 28 minutes, so please sit back, uh, and take in obviously what Richard and Gary has to offer and then we'll open up the questions after the video. Thank you ever so much for the introduction, Paul. Good morning, everybody. Um, Gary and I are about to start talking to you about the digital pest management system. If you've got any questions as we're going through, please just put them into the chat box. So with no further ado, I'm just gonna start talking to Gary. So Gary, what's the importance of this digital technology and the data that it provides us as pest controllers? Yeah, cheers, um, Rich. Um, I think it's, it's important to understand um, why we might want to um, integrate um, technology and data-driven systems into our industry to enhance our professional services. Um, and this is something we can talk a lot about, but of course, with, um, with, with the time that we've got today, I just kind of just want to um, put that message out there for, for everybody that's on the call and listening to, to today's webinar. And if we think about um, other systems, just, just setting pest management aside for a moment, um, for a number of years now, the, the innovation and the technology has existed um, through the Internet of Things for us to connect things to things. And this, this, this allows uh, us to have a greater understanding and greater knowledge of the systems that we use every day. So if we think about a, a building that will have um, intruder detection in it or entry detection, so smart cards where people go through doors, it catches data. It's not just a card that um, un unlocks a door, but it catches data so we know uh, how often that door um, has been used, who used it, what time they came in, what time they came out. This is all data that's meaningful to somebody. You would think about the same with um, with fire suppression, uh, detection and suppress suppression systems. It's to detect um, fires and how to suppress those fires until the professionals arrive on site. Um, much more um, targeted and much more efficient. And the same can be said of HVAC systems where we monitor the flow and the um, and the quality of the air through a building and lots of other things. 
the data that's captured is the key thing here. Um, you know, and, and we hear it a lot, Richard, and I do every day when I'm talking to, to pest professionals, is that the, the worry is that using these systems somehow diminishes their skills and their knowledge and in time could replace them. Absolutely not. You know, this is not what, what the the aim is and this is not what the um what, what will um be concluded through using these systems. The 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 reason that I say that is that the data means something to the professionals who understand what that data is and then you use that um, to combine with your skills um, and, and your knowledge and your experience to better understand the behaviour of rodents. So it, it, it's, it's using all, everything that we, we possess as professional um, pest um, controllers or, or pest specialists the data then enhances it gives us a, a level of knowledge that we never had until until this innovation um, became available to us so so it, it's it's interpreting that data and that's what we do and then we use that data combined with our skills and knowledge and experience to decide what our course of action is going to be so absolutely this is not uh, in any way um, going to diminish what we do is and, and take the roles uh, as pest professionals, if anything, it's going to create new roles. I, I can see a time when, not too uh, long in the future, where roles that don't exist today will be created because we'll have people that may um, look regularly at this data where you've got a company that's got lots of customers, uh, customer sites connected, and there's data coming through regularly, and somebody needs to analyze that data um, and then decide what they're going to do with it. And there might be roles created uh, for people within the industry. That, that, that do that, or maybe not just do that a lot, but, but that is uh, the principal purpose of, of the role within within a business, to interpret that data and then draw out a, a plan of action of what they're going to do uh, from, from, from what we know about it. So this is kind of uh, how we use the technology and the data to, to, to drive efficiencies for, for ourselves, for our customers, and for the wider public as well. Remember, we're monitoring for rodents here, and, and the presence of rodents in any part of, of um, our environment has uh, the ability to have a, a detrimental effect to everybody within that environment. And of course, uh, we, we're, we're reducing the, the need to, to use chemicals, uh, which is uh, a lot more sustainable. So this is kind of how we should be looking at um, what is it that it's going to do for us? What is technology and the data going to do for us that's going to in the future and right from now onwards going to drive a better service for, for, for our customers? Um, one thing I'd like to do, um, and, I, and I can do this right now, is just to give you a bit of um, an example of how, how that might work, is I'm going to, um, I'm going to share um, a demonstration portal. It's our demonstration portal. Um, it, I'm going to open it um, on the digital site plan page and the idea of this is just to give you a bit of an idea of some two really of, of the features that you can expect from dpm um, and and why these will um why these will will benefit from you and hopefully um if this works smoothly richard is down in in the devon cornwall area and i'm 300 miles further north uh, just outside of preston at, at home and He's going to snap the traps and we're going to, uh, on the portal that I'm screen sharing with you at the moment, you're going to see the representation of those traps change um, as the um, as those snap alerts come through. So what we're looking at at the moment is um, this is a, this is what uh, typically what, what one of your customers um, sites might look like. I've, I've opened it on the, the digital site plan page and we've got three traps on here, three, five and 50. Uh, showing the, the status of those traps at the last time they, they were triggered or the last um, heartbeat that they sent through, the last piece of data they sent through. Uh, so number three is showing that it's set and ready to do its uh, its job. Traps 50 and traps 5, they are showing a downward amber triangle. That's the um, that's the icon that indicates that these traps have snapped empty on their last, on their last event. That means that the, the trap was accidentally triggered. It needs resetting but it hasn't got a capture in it. And, and of course, this is even straight away, just looking at, at, at this, we can see that that is something that without digital, we never had the knowledge of. So we put a trap down and we might go back four, five, six weeks later, that trap might snap the same day or at any time between the visit it was set and the follow-up visit. 
we don't know that that trap, if we don't know that the trap's not connected, then we don't know that the trap snapped and, and not doing anything. We could have rodents passing backwards and forwards through that box uh, or in that area, um, but we've no knowledge of it. But here we have, uh, we know that the trap's um, uh, they snapped accidentally, but it just needs resetting because it's not doing its job. Uh, and, and just to explain what the uh, the other icon is that you can see there with the 222 underneath it, that's our gateway that's plugged in and live. So, Richard, I'm going to ask you, I think you've got trap number five in front of you, perhaps. Yeah, I'll just set that now, mate. So, so I'm so, just setting is, trap five here in Cornwall. So, so as Richard sets trap number five, what I'll do is I'll do a page refresh. It, of course, it refreshes naturally, uh, regularly throughout the course of a day, but for the purpose of a demonstration, we can we can uh, manually refresh that and what we'll see now is that trap number five will go to a, a green icon to show that it's there we go okay. to show that it's set and ready to do its job so so there we go perfect uh, you know that, that's how quickly um that's how quickly these uh the, the the messages come through to show the status of the trap so what i'm going to do now rich if you could uh snap the trap either as a snap empty or a snap capture whichever is um whichever you'd like what, to do what i'll do i'll do it as a, i'll do it as a snap capture mate just again, to show the different icon and and then to go through the process yeah absolutely so, so that's so. just been triggered now and my fingers are all still intact which is good yeah. as well yeah, that's good that's good to hear um so so what would happen though is if this was your site and you was uh the the, uh, the responsible person monitoring for it um, an alert would uh, the, whoever subscribes uh, for the alerts will get the alert but um, certainly that would be uh, the, the lead technician for the site would get an alert that, which comes through as an email or as a text to say that um, a trap is triggered the, the the level of information within that alert um, is uh, gives the um, the customer the customer address the site the actual trap and the location of that trap that has been triggered um, that's the information that comes through so instantly within a, within um, a few moments you'll get the notification you'll know that that trap's been triggered you'll be able to see it on um, on your um, device whether that's your phone your um, in your vehicle or wherever you are your your tablet or of course in the portal as well so instantly there we can see that um, trap number five is, is, is now indicating that it's got a capture in it. And uh, the red upward pointing triangle is telling us that uh, we've got a capture in. If, we, um, if I click on, on this now, we can get a little bit of information about this trap. Um, so we can see there that it's trap number five, its current status is that it's got a capture in it. We can see that it's online, it's snapped, um, which is, uh, it, if it wasn't, it would be snapped empty. Uh, we know the probe connected is for the US market, so not relevant to us here in the UK. And we've got the battery level is OK. And we can also draw some other information about this trap. We can just open a, um, a few of these drop down boxes. Uh, we, uh, here we have the device ID. So on the, um, on the underside of each trap, we have a QR code and then we have um, uh, that, that code um, uh, represented also in, um, in digits. Um, and um, what you're looking at there is the device ID it is the, um, the unique code for that trap that is also printed on the base of the trap. And the variant is that it's a snapped trap, and we know that it's a rat trap. It says that this is a nice um, this is a nice piece of um, the, the, the system that people, our customers that are using at the moment, use quite regularly. And it's the recent uh, events. So all we can do, we we, we can see here that the the, the the snap that Richard has just demonstrated for us is uh, not only is it date stamped, but it is also time stamped. Um, so we know the precise moment that that, that that rodent was caught. So we just keep that in mind. There's a piece of information, a piece of knowledge that without having um, a connected system, so this is a cloud based connected system, of course, we, we, we wouldn't know. We'd, we'd know when we inspected the trap and found a rodent in it. That had it caught something, and you could kind of have a bit of a, a rough guess as to the state of that car because that that, um, that that dead rodent, as to how long it's been in there. What we know here is the precise moment that that, that rodent was caught. It's a little bit of knowledge, and I'll come back to try and give you an understanding of why that is so important to, to us professionals uh, in a moment. 
And then we can also then we can just scroll down and we can do various things, um, learn various things about this trap, but we can also view its entire history. We click a view all. We can see the entire history of what this trap has done um, since its installation. Uh, and there's various different bits of information on here that probably not got the time to go into detail about it on uh, on a short call like this webinar. But of course, if uh, if you contact us and you want to go into this in a great lot of detail, please do so. And we'll be happy to spend as much time with you uh, explaining what all this means and the relevance of it and how to navigate the portal um, and the app uh, in a little more detail. But clearly here, what we can see now is uh, that's this morning's capture. And um, we, we can, there's various different things we can do. We can mark that trap as empty. And the reason that uh, we, we have the ability to do this is it might well be that that uh, isn't a rodent that's in there. It could well be that um, we've had this happen. Um, occasionally it happens. It's not often, but it's nice to have the ability to change um, what, what uh, the, 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 the data is telling us. And we had one where uh, in a shrubbery, um, the ground um, keepers had been in and a branch from some shrubbery had gone in and, and actually got caught underneath the um, underneath the kill bar. So it, it wasn't actually a rat, even though it was um, it was marked up as a rat. It was alerted as a rat, as a rodent. Um, but we can uh, we can change that. Uh, in, importantly, as well, you can give authority uh, for it. So it might well be that only one one person within the organisation, maybe the area manager or um, somebody in a senior management role, can change that. So not just anybody can go in and just just change it to manipulate the data as uh, they see fit. And we also have the ability to click open edit species, and we can um, it, we can change the species of the capture in there as well. And again, just just uh, scrolling through um, through the uh, history of this trap, we can see that it was also snapped um, on uh, on and had a capture on it on the, the sixth. These are all demonstrations, of course, by the way. So this is when we've been doing demonstrations similar to this, and that was on um, the sixth of the month. Um, again, uh, that was uh, this, this one was at uh, eleven forty one. This one at ten uh, ten forty eight. So this was when uh, when myself and Rich would have been doing a demonstration. So this is just um, kind of just just touching a little on some of the functionality of um, of the system, um, and you know some of the important data that we're capturing, um, and. Uh, there's lots of other things that that we're able to uh, to look at, but without going into um, too much detail over the course of this uh, this short short webinar, I think that's just a, a nice thing to be able to look at. I'm going to go back to the digital site plan page because there is something that I also want to share whilst I've got the opportunity. Um, is that uh, you just get a bit of an idea of how we can now see real time what our traps are doing 24/7 uh, every single day of the year. And all that data is captured, all that uh, history of, of each and every trap that you've got on each and every site is now available to, to yourself and to anybody you want to share it with. So this can form part of a review with, uh, with your customers and your clients, and you can talk through uh, what's happened over a given period of time. What a, uh, I, I would just like to, to share with, uh, with everybody as well is what we're looking at now, of course, is the um, live real-time digital site plan. This is what those the status of those traps is right this moment now. But it but um one thing that's nice to be able to do is is look at um this this site plan but over a period of time as a heat map. So we get um we get to see just with one click of a mouse, we click on heat map here and we get to see what has happened historically um over a given period of time. So by default, it goes back by one month, but by clicking the calendar here, we can take it back. Um, I'm going to take this back. Let's go back to the beginning of the year and it will refresh. And what it's telling us now is uh, what has happened to this trap since the 1st of January up until uh, this morning. And we can see here that in that period of time, uh, we've got um, we've got a number of, of, uh, of snaps. So um, trap number three. It's got two trap number five that Rich has just been snapping. Um, doesn't have any history. It's a brand new trap. This one. So historically, the the, the uh, events that Richard has just demonstrated today are um, are the uh, the entire history of it because it just hasn't been uh, online for that long. 
but um, in in real in real life, when you've got a system that's that's set up um, in uh, in a customer's premises and you've had that customer for three months, six months, twelve months, all that data that's captured can be transferred from current, which is a live real time map, into a heat map. And again, this can this this is helpful in that. Let's um, go back to the heat map actually, because what's what's important here is that we can instantly i'm going to bring this forward a little bit to try and capture some of the data that's a little more relevant so i'm going to go back to the beginning of, of april so all we can see now is that um from from the first of april to today this trap here number three has had two snaps on it so if we was looking at this as a, a, a review with with the customers we can instantly see that this is our area of activity the other traps aren't the uh, traps in these other areas it's not giving us any concern. We know that our own activity has been here. So we can be very targeted now as to explain to our customer, this is where we're concentrating our, our skills and our knowledge and, and uh, the work that we're doing. And this then drives the cost efficiency for the customer as well. Remember, every time that we do a site visit, somebody pays for that. Um, and if it's our customer that's paying for it, they'd like to know that their money's being well spent. You know, we don't need to go and inspect uh, all the other traps and all the other areas. We're going to go and we're going to spend our hour or whatever length of time we need to be there focusing on the area where the activity has been. So we can be very, very targeted about, um, about our, our service visits, our follow up visits. Uh, and again, this is, you know, I talk a lot about driving efficiencies. That is driving cost efficiencies for your customer, making sure that the time that they spend paying for your, your skills is in an area um, that's of concern or an area that's of importance and it's driving time efficiencies for us as the professionals. We don't need to waste time going around all the other areas uh, on this particular visit. This is where we're going to spend our time so we can be more efficient with the time that we spend. And of course, th there's benefits to that, you know, we we we, we perhaps could do in 30 minutes what historically might have taken us 90 minutes to do, you know, to inspect all the other areas so we can be more time efficient as well and time efficiencies and cost efficiencies, all these things are of benefit to both us and our customers as well. So um, with uh, with that in um, kind of a, as a, a quick overview of, of what um, the idea of what the, the digital um, innovation brings to the pest control market and the pest control industry, why the data is important um, and, uh, and and a little bit there about a couple of the features of, of the um, of the MVU DPM system and, and how it will benefit uh, customers and clients and, and professional um, uh, professional pesties uh, going forward. Brilliant. So thanks for showing us that Gary. That was really, really good, really informative. And it gives a great example of how the data can be used. Have you got any actual real life examples or case studies where that's been actually put into practice? Yeah, absolutely, um, Richard. And um, if you think back to maybe 10 or 15 minutes ago, I was talking about the data and that, that date and time stamp and the importance of it. Tiny little bit of information that can almost be overlooked as, as, as not significant. This example of um, a supermarket last year that uh, had an installation of, of DPM. And this uh, hopefully will give some insight into how that small piece of information of the date and the time stamped help the pe uh, professional um, pest controller uh, determine what the reason for the rodent activity was. So what happened was um, that the, 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 the site had uh, had an installation of DPM. This was in January 2022, so just um, just over a year ago. And we, we we set the system up, and it was in a service yard. And we had rat traps, and we had them in various different parts. We worked with the um, with the pest control provider and the client together um, to set the system up. The following morning, we had capture alert come through. At um, it was at 19 minutes past eight in the morning. And it was on one of the traps, I think it was trap number nine, which was on a fence line near where some waste bins were. And that fence line, beyond that fence line, was um, an area of land which I believe was owned by the local council. So completely out of, of, of control of, of us as the uh, professional pesties, but, um, but still uh, 
able to influence what happened on the land that we was responsible for. So, um, so that was fine. We, we we knew exactly what time it had, had happened, and um, we knew that that there'd been a capture there. That was the alert for for the technician to to go to site and do his investigation in that area. That alone probably makes us think, well, yeah, you'd expect that. It's it's winter time. We've 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 got traps and um, on a fence line, and we've got them near waste. Not particularly unusual, and perhaps something that we could say, well, that's kind of what we expect. Probably the the most um, unexpected part about about it was that it happened within 24 hours of the installation. Um, so that was really good. But um, interestingly, what happened then was the following morning, we had another capture on trap number 10, which was the one next to number nine, again on that fence line, very close to the the waste bins. Um, and that capture alert came through at 21 minutes past eight. So two days consecutively two rats caught in the same area within two minutes of each other. So straight away, I got on the telephone to uh, to, to, uh, to the pest control um, man uh, area manager, in fact, and said, and before I could even say, because uh, uh, this guy had got the alert as well, he said, I know what you're going to ask. Why have we got rodents in January active in that area at 20 past eight in the morning? Because as professionals, we both thought, that it would be um it, it would be quite um logical for us to to think that those rodents would be active um maybe between three four five in the morning when it's still dark when the service yard is closed and there's no activity on there and it's very very quiet uh not at 20 past eight in the morning in january when the service yard has been open for over two hours it opens from six in the morning might be 5 30. so it's been open for a few hours we've got people and vehicles lots of things going on in that yard and it's starting to come daylight so there's something that's influencing those rodents to be active at that time what is it and what we found out was and this is all because of that small piece of information knowing when the rodents was active in that area we found that um the, the particular site collects their waste um, uh, that's generated inside. They keep it inside overnight, so they're not opening and closing the shutter door. And then they have a change shift at eight o'clock in the morning. The, um, the the waste that's generated inside is brought outside by the morning uh, hygiene team, and they take it into the bins. Invariably, some of that waste gets dropped on the floor, and it is often the case it doesn't get cleaned up. And we concluded that it was foraging rodents making the most. Of, of, of the food that was spilt on the floor because it was easy pickings for them pushing through the fence line not resident in the service yard yet but pushing through the fence line having the feed and then back through the fence line again what we was able to do then was um you know we, we, this can then be opening the portal is such a powerful thing showing the data to the customer and the client and saying we we know this happened as professionals we think that this happened because of this an easy way to rectify it is make sure that the waste is cleaned up as soon as it's spilt. Having been a pest controller for uh, in excess of 30 years and being a technician for, for, for some of those time, uh, some of those years, I know that, um, you know, and everybody that's on this call would have experienced this. You make recommendations and suggestions and people say, yeah, we'll do that. And sometimes they don't. Sometimes they do for a, a little while and they stop again being able to open the portal and say to, to and this is what happened is and say to to the to the site team these rodents have been brought here because of the actions or the inactions of yourselves do you want rodents in your workplace no of course you don't they didn't they understood no by looking at this this data and this information having a professional explain to them why it was happening and what can be done simply and for no cost whatsoever to prevent it from happening in the future, you're going to really, really reduce that risk of having rodents become resident on your site where you're working and the impact that that may have on you and everybody else that's working in that area as well. And on the reputation of the business, you know, this is, um, you know, we mustn't overlook the, the reputational damage that rodents can do to us. And, you know, it, they bought into it. They bought into it and it was, yeah, uh, we'll make sure we clean up after us. And we had no more activity on there until May time. Of course, we know that we're going to get uh, activity periodically. Rodents coming from one place to another place. But, um, but, but it was that little piece of information, Rich. That was the important thing. 
we instantly knew when those runs and it wasn't coincidence we believed that there was a reason for it you know i don't believe that things just happen uh, accidentally you know and we're, we're we're smart um curious people we have this why is that happening that's what we are as, as professional pesties uh, you know and, and the audience today on the webinar i'm absolutely sure uh, have the same mindset we want to know why something's happening we have this we go to a site, we want to know what goes on in there. We want to open a door and see what's behind the door. We want to lift a panel, you know, and all this data and this information, it all helps us build um, this, this picture of rodent behavior. And it, it's crucial to, to us as an industry and to the services that we deliver and, um, and, and the benefits that that brings to, to everybody, you know, everybody um, as well as our customers and our clients. But as I say, to the wider, um to, to the wider uh, environment it's very important brilliant well thank you ever so much mate i think that's been a really good run through of what the dpm system can do so i think now is a great time to go to the floor and take our question and answer session so guys we'll take your questions now thank you okay back in them back in the room okay so thanks Gary, Richard, it's great insight into what Digicon offer. Um, I'll actually add something to the conversation, if I may, um, which is we, we often ask pesties what percentage of a routine inspection uh, is, is focused purely on bait box checking. Um, the answer we often get is 70 to 75 percent of a routine visit is often spent opening bait boxes. Uh, I think what digital really offers us is a different opportunity to change the way we approach pest control. Um, and I, I think the best way to explain is what if we use that 70, 75 percent of the inspection to do different, you know, focus more heavily on risk mitigation activity. So identifying, uh, proofing, housekeeping, hygiene and really sort of driving the customer to help us a lot more in what we're trying to achieve, um, which is a pest-free environment. Um, and I think that that is key because the, the benefit is not only pest-free for the customer, if, if we do our jobs correctly and we've got the right level of engagement from the customer, but also what is the spin-off from that? Now, in my view, and I happily take questions from the floor, um, Often, I think if if we do that piece right on the routine inspection, what we can expect as as a business owner or business operator is a saving in time management. So it, it reduces the need for those re reactive calls and the the non productive stuff that goes into obviously having follow ups and and call outs. And what does that mean? Well, that you what that allows us to do is convert that time into more money making exercises, which is more profitable for the business. Um, happy to to take people's views on that, and you know, by all means, if you agree, disagree, that's completely fine. This is this is a, a completely open conversation. Um, but before we get into the questions, for those curious about how much digital solution would cost, please get in touch with your Killjoy account manager, who will be happy to help you walk you through the structure. Because the way that the subscription model with Killjoy operates is. You can have a digital solution, but as little as 10 traps on a site, smart traps. So it, it ramps up from 10 to whatever that number may be. But my point being is you don't have to blanket uh, a, a site with total digital. You can be very tailor-made and make, make a niche um, uh, program using digital for as little as 10 traps as well. So please keep in, that in mind as well. Uh, in addition, both Kiljim and the Envu team will be on hand to provide ongoing support with all elements involving survey, presentation and installation. You just got to ask. You've got our support. If you want us to come with you and pitch the idea to a customer as an upsell, um, happy to do that. And certainly you've got my commitment and my team's commitment to do so. And I, I'm equally confident Kiljim will provide that support as well. Now let's take some time to answer your questions. Uh, before we, we go on the webinar today, I know we had three questions already pending. So Richard, could you please yes, send the first one at me? Yeah, so the first one comes from a Mr. Paul Joshi and he's from Pest Terminators. And he said, we are moving from general practices to digital one. 
can AI help us in this? If yes, then please can you explain how? And if no, then why is it not needed in this situation? It's an interesting question when it comes to AI, because I think we've, we've all read the news lately with the likes of ChatGPT coming in um, and the fantastic things it offers. For me, the answer is is no, quite honestly, because the best tools we have is our, our eyes, our instinct, our, our experience as, as professional people in this industry. Um, I think it'd be a pretty sad day that AI comes in and, and plays, a, plays a part because I think what digital is not there to do is to replace people. Just want to make that crystal clear. It's, it's not there to challenge us or our positions. It's there as an additional tool and function to help us to be more professional and be more um, proactive in what we do. I hope that covers that, Richard. So I know you've got two further ones, which Gary will take. Yeah. So the next one's from Craig Blackburn from Wipeout UK. And he says, how does it work? on an old building and structures with dense walls, Gary. Okay, thanks for that, Rich. Uh, hi, Craig, if you're on the call. Um, hope you're well, mate. Um, yeah, it's, it's a question that we, we get asked often, um, and I think it's just uh, having a bit of an understanding of, of the uh, limitations and the capacities of, of LoRa, which is the uh, the connectivity that we use for the system. So the gateway um, is, is the device that plugs in using a three-pin socket. Uh, on a site, you can have multiple gateways if you've got particularly large or particularly complex sites and a lot of traps. So there's an unlimited amount of traps can connect to a gateway and there's an unlimited amount of gateways that you can have on a site. It's just a case of making sure you get the right amount of gateways in the right areas uh, to get the connectivity. So we we, we will help with uh, this at the survey level. We, we help uh, do a connectivity check. And see what the coverage is, what the coverage is, and um, where we need to put the additional gateway. Should we need to do that? Uh, to answer your question, Craig, in terms of older buildings, not particularly. Um, it, it's not particularly whether it's an older building or, or a newer building or a modern building. It, it's more to do with the complexity and the size of the site. Um, certain materials, particularly um, steel, does disrupt the LoRa signal. So if you've got um, um, an older building that has less steel in it, you might get better connectivity than you do with a brand new building that's got a lot of steel in it. So we've, we've got systems in, in both. We've got systems in a brand new uh, one billion uh, pound uh, building in central London. Uh, very, very modern. Um, we get, we've get we got great connectivity and great coverage in there by using um, uh, multiple gateways. We've also got older sites um, that we've connected with one or, or two gateways. So this is all something that will help you with at the, at the time of, of the survey. But, you know, this is a real important part of it. So we get an understanding of how the connectivity moves around that, that building. Um, so hopefully that, uh, that answers that, Craig. OK, Gary, the next question is from Jason Chollerton of CSS Pest Services, and he says, can the interface be integrated to a company's website and can it be branded as such? Hi, Jason. Not well. Um, yeah, the, the, there's, the, the short answer is um, yes, things can uh, interface with, with DPM. Um, it's, 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 I'm going to say it's a complex issue. It, it isn't really, but um, we have a document, uh, an API document. It didn't mean a great lot to me, what an API document was, until um, about three years ago. Um, I still don't understand it. It's uh, for, for, for smart IT people to interpret what is in that API document. But effectively what it is, it, it, it allows somebody who knows what they're reading and understands what it is to, um, to interface one system with another system. So in answer to your question, um, yes, there is probably high high um, likelihood that DPM can interface with um, with with a website or with an online reporting system, this sort of thing, or um, portals that already exist, so that when you open, for example, um, a hygiene or a cleaning portal, the various different services, cleaning, waste management, pest control, can all sit within one portal. Um, the key thing is is uh, request a copy of the API document, we'll send it to you, and then the intelligent people then can read it and uh, work out what, what they do to, to make the two interface. In terms of the branding, uh, Jason, um, let us get back to you on that one. I know it's been asked before. Um, of course, 
there is the ability to rebrand. We, we've done it ourselves internally when we moved from Bayer into MVU. Um, I just I'll just need to look into to this in a bit more detail as to how easy that is to do and if there uh, is a cost and what that cost is for you. But we will look into that for you, mate. Great. The next question we have is from Dave Kirby. And Dave says, how do you overcome them becoming trap shy or developing box avoidance? Do, do you want me to hit that switch? Sorry, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is, uh, of course, this is something that um, we, 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 we fully understand. And um, in, in terms of you think of, of um, what we've got in as digital systems now, um, it's a it's a smart it's a smart trap in a smart cloud based system. It still has the same limitations that you would do with with non smart traps and any other monitoring devices that you're using. So this is where the skills and the knowledge and the experience of the professional pest industry comes in to decide where it's relevant and where it isn't relevant. So what I would say is that what we've got right now are, are traps, smart traps. Um, there's ongoing development for, um, for for there to be different devices um, launched in the future. What those devices um, may be, they, they could be sensors, they could be camera technology. So all the things that we look to do right now, if we're using a manual system, which is our skills and alternative tools that we've, we've got at our disposal to overcome um, behavioural resistance um, within rodents, it is the same thing in digital. We, um, you know, we will experience those limitations for sure, and it might well be that the digital trap in a certain area, in a certain location, just isn't the right thing. Um, on its own, you would combine it with with, um, with 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 other methods of monitoring. So, you know, I think I think the message um, is: don't think of this as a replacement. It's not take everything out that you've always been doing and and, and put digital in hundred percent. You can do that, but this is where we use our, our knowledge and our skills to determine whether that's the right course of action or whether a better course of action is to uh, combine the two together. So we've still got areas, and, and you know this times when we really want to go to areas and monitor those uh you know with our with our with our eyes for ourselves um but then the traps might be in an area that we, we just want to make sure is anything moving into those areas uh particularly if they're difficult to access any structures um void areas roof space areas uh, we have um, an airport in the uk that's got dpm in it uh, they've got the, the traps on uh, on air side which, um, of course, there's, there's challenges in getting their side at short notice um, because of the permit you go through the same security checks you do when you, you, you're travelling overseas. So, so uh, yeah, the message is, of course, we'll, we'll have those challenges of behavioural resistance, but uh, we're, we're looking into uh, various different um, pieces of hardware and, um, and, and methods of monitoring, uh, but also think of this as being... Um, not uh, and necessarily a replacement for what you've always done, combining manual um, visual inspections uh, and other techniques with uh, with digital as well. Great. That seems to be it so far, gents. Great stuff. Thank you very much. Um, anyone that's got any questions that, that wants following up, please reach out to the Kildren team and, and ask anything or any support you need. We'll be happy to follow up following the webinar today. Um, uh, what I will do is thank you all for joining us today on the Digital Pest, Pest Management Webinar. We hope you found the session informative, engaging and thought-provoking. Um, as we discussed in, in part today, digital is not a total solution for every scenario, but it is an important tool for the future because of some of the regulatory things that you know we're seeing as, as sort of challenges coming through and we all we all know that it, it is a difficult thing, both as a manufacturer and a professional user of pest products, um, to make sure we've got the tools for the future that we need. And digital, we see, is, is an important part of that future. Um, before we wrap up, I'd like to remind you all that we're sending out records of the webinar to all the attendees, along with additional resources that were shared during the session. Um, so be sure to keep an eye out in the inbox. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out more than happy to follow up with you guys and, and give the support you need. 
um, or reach out to your Kill Dream account manager. We'd love to hear your feedback and continue this conversation. Finally, I'd like to extend a huge thank you to, to Kill Dream for hosting today's event and to all of you for your participation and engagement. We look forward to connecting with you again soon. And in the meantime, we wish you a good week and continue the conversation around digital solutions and where they can play an important part in today's pest control world. I uh, hope you found it informative. I, I bid you a good day. Thank you very much. And um, please just ask if you need our help. Thank you all. Thank you.